Okay, so even though I have talked about setting up your display performance under preferences and your view menu, and I have shown you W for preview mode, I really wanna nail that concept home, so I'm gonna do it one more time. File and open. In chapter two, folder number six. Again, I cannot open anything other than an InDesign file. I had this simple two page layout from a shoe ad. And when I zoom in here, got all my shoes, they're looking good. Got my Illustrator logo. That's looking good because I've set up my display performance as high quality and it matches my view menu at high quality. So we're good on that. But I see a bunch of boxes. Boxes right down here I haven't even used yet. Boxes over here. Boxes, green outlines, little links. Every time you put a photo in a box, it's a link. And I don't like looking at those. So again, it is W for preview. This looks nice and clean. This is what I would get if I was holding this in my hands as a newspaper ad. Okay, and I'm gonna click on this photo and even though, and this is a nice little feature that you should be aware of, even though this photo is in a box, I have colored the background of that box with blue, okay? So if I am on a photo, let's see what happens. I click on the box with my black arrow, so I am dealing with the box itself, and now I go to Object, Effect, Drop Shadow. Notice how the box itself got an entire drop shadow. I didn't want that. I want the shoes to have a drop shadow, not the box. Okay, so keep in mind, this is a perfect example where the black arrow and the white arrow come into play. The black arrow selects what's what you're clicking on, the box, the container. So drop shadows will go around the outer edge of the container. If I switch to the white arrow and I click, now I have selected the photo that's inside that blue box. Okay, you can see how the boundary is a little smaller than the box itself because the photo is a little smaller. This gets really tricky. You're gonna have a lot of practice with this. But now when I go to Object, Effects, and Drop Shadow, the shoes have a drop shadow, not the box. So just be aware of that. I'm in preview mode. This looks nice and slick because I hit W. If I hit W, I'm out of it. Hit W again, I'm in it. Black arrow selects the container. White arrow, you click, and now you have selected what's in the container and now I've applied my drop shadow. So now I got a nice slick look of what my uh, two page ad would look like to any viewer. Black arrow versus white arrow, okay? Keep that in mind. Here's the only other trick that I'll show you here since we're talking about drop shadows. Notice how this drop shadow goes down and to the right but this drop shadow goes down and to the left, okay? So when you're dealing with drop shadows, let's click on this photo, take my white arrow and click. Now I've selected the photo inside that blue box. Object, Effects, Drop Shadow, okay? There is a button called Use Global Light. If you turn this on, all your drop shadows will go in the same direction. So I'll just show you just for argument's sake. If I turn this on and I click OK, notice how this drop shadow goes down and to the right. And now this one has changed. Okay, this one has stayed the same. I'm sorry. Uh, that's because I physically changed that. Okay, but if I clicked on it and said object, Effects, drop shadow. Ah, see, when I worked on this before, I turned that off. Use global light. 
So now that goes down and to the right. That goes down and to the right. So you can have that consistency if you want. Down and to the right, down and to the right. That's the use global light feature. But, you know, I lose the edge of the box here. I like how this comes across and defines that inside edge. I want the same thing here. So if you don't want it always matching, object, effects, drop shadow, and do not use a global light. That allows you a little more flexibility and creativity with your files. W gets out of preview mode. And just remember you have W for preview. I cannot repeat that enough.